Okay, good morning and welcome to today's panel discussion on how important is inline x-ray in factory automation. Uh, high volume manufacturing and high reliability applications have been increasing in automotive and medical and various other areas of technology and all of that is driving the need for uh, inline x-ray uh, to work in real time. Uh, up till now it's it's been uh, used for sure but um, in some cases the, the quality hasn't quite been there uh, but nowadays we are uh, here to discuss um, some of the improvements that have come down the track recently uh, to help X-ray work in the factory. Joining me today to discuss this on the, my far right, we have Michael Ford from Aegis, we have CK Park from Tech Valley in Korea, and we have Greg Wood from Nordson Matrix. So welcome, gentlemen. Uh, I'll get right in with my first question. Um, Inline X-ray till now has been limited to a few high volume product markets. What new applications are driving uh, the expansion of inline x-ray. Um, shall we start with you, CK? Oh, yeah. Um, definitely, inline application means uh, inspection of entire production. There are two important things. One is uh, entire inspection, and second is uh, without any human interaction during the process. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think the uh, most uh, driven uh, application area is uh, automobile uh, uh, electronic boards. Mm -hmm. So this is, is a very important for human uh, crisis. So uh, the perfect uh, uh, product is required. Okay. So I think uh, the electronic boards, especially in Europe. In Europe, yeah. okay. Yeah. Are you seeing any new um, markets opening up for inline x-ray? Uh, yeah, either in inline X-ray or semi-automatic X-ray. It's a um, or a um, semi-inline X-ray, and it, to me, it's really interesting on what happens outside of the traditional SMT line, where we're really seeing a tremendous drive for our products, for example, is in semiconductor package inspection prior to placing the package onto the printed circuit board assembly. We're also seeing a tremendous um, pull in the power hybrid segment. Um, we're also seeing on the other side of the line, um, we're seeing um, drive in final assembly and test, um, battery inspection prior to installation into a mobile product. So the things that are, the technologies that we're developing for, in some cases, much finer geometries, much more difficult inspection tests that are being leveraged back into the more traditional SMT assembly line is really kind of interesting terrain right now. And it's really driving a, 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 the lion's share in some cases of our business in terms of our technology development. Right, yeah. I mean, Michael, I mean, with the, the miniaturization that's coming into the industry and, and uh, the increasing requirement for reliability, do you think that inline x-ray is going to become a mainstream part of the line uh, in the future? Yeah, really it is. I mean, uh, I'm a software guy, so, you know, um, we can do wonderful things when we get data. Mm. And the ultimate goal of getting the data live as the line operates is that goal towards zero defects. Now, originally, kind of inspection machines were there as a filter. They would filter by discovery of defects, and those defects would then go off to repair. Yeah. That's almost like a, a sad story because it means you've already created a problem. Today's machines, they are not looking for defects. Yeah. The, the data is being measured to see what is the success rate of certain features that are being installed so that you can use predictive analysis to avoid defects from happening by the feedback of the data that you get from the inspection machines and utilize that to modify the process. In, the thing about X-ray is that it gives you the real view. You know, you cannot get any better view of what you're looking at. The difficulty is in the interpretation of what you're seeing because, you know, as the line is working very fast, you need real-time feedback. So getting the data from the machine in a standard format where software can start to work on it gives that software the opportunity to contribute towards zero defect for that line. Yeah. This is an incredible value. And it completely changes the value proposition of buying an X-ray machine. It's not a filter of something you've done wrong. Yes. It's actually the opportunity to do things right first time, every time. So, so you're, in that case, it's going to be 
positioned in a line in that case, it's going to be positioned before the, the reflow oven. You can uh, put it anywhere you like. It depends <laughs> on what you're looking you for. Once you bake these components onto the board, you're, you're into money. Uh, so uh, so uh, it's an interesting argument, but I, I totally take that on board. Now, as I said at the beginning, CK, uh, the, yeah. the history of inline X-ray uh, wasn't wonderful, uh, frankly, uh, but the technology's come on a long way yeah. uh, recently. Yeah. Uh, what things have changed that, to make it a really valuable tool now in... in, in uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, although the inline and perfect inspection is said is a filtering is required, but uh, there's a still have some uh, two bottlenecks. What is important thing is the cycle time required by a, a, a production floor. Yeah. So far, the current technology can, couldn't catch. Uh, uh, that technology. So instead of that, uh, most of customers is using uh, large volume batch processing. Right. So this is the main. And then once we overcome the cycle time, then the next issue is the accuracy, force call rate. Mm -hmm. How we can reduce the force call rate, which is, which can be effective in production line. So that uh, currently some uh, uh, the. The best technology, laminograph or computer tomography, of course, can do the perfect uh, filtering, but uh, we have to overcome the cycle time. So uh, we need a new level of technology which can overcome these two uh, uh, things. Right. Um, let, let me just help you with that. <laughs> um, because having the data about the whole production process into machines means that you can understand which machines need to be inspected and which do not. So this leads into a whole area of adaptive test or adaptive inspection, because you could have a longer cycle time than the line, but if you can identify any of the products that have come along, along the line for which there was absolutely no change whatsoever in the process, you could say statistically that you don't need to x-ray that board. Whereas any board where there was an experience of anything changing, like a reel was changed, or a setting was changed, or there was a long gap in production, anything, or you know, the, even the uh, paste on the stencil, there was some kind of aging of that. Whatever you determine to be a, a kind of significant change, you can flag that product for test. Yeah. So it means that you can do, statistically speaking, you can do as good a test as testing every single board, but without the concern of the cycle time, because you are uh, smartly selecting which products you need to, to inspect. So people have statistically proven that to be true. I can see, I can see how that would help, for sure. Um, but, but, but I think, CK, you've got a unique um, technology for being able to uh, reduce the, the, the false call rate um, yeah. uh, by, by analyzing um, data at the edges. Yeah. Can, you, can you explain that a little bit to me? Because I, 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 uh, I don't know how that uh, works. Um, I think uh, I have uh, proven data that with uh, our recent uh, artificial intelligence platform technology, which is proven by uh, Samsung 5G product recently. Mm -hmm. You know, the Samsung is producing 5G product already, and they are going to extend their production lines 2020 in a very large volume. So, um, so we tested our technology, and it is a problem. We reduce the cycle time 70 percent more versus the existing level, and we achieve the false call rate less than three percent by a uh, uh, 5G uh, uh, board. So, um, so of, of course, the force call rate and accuracy and speed is a depend on the product and application-wise. It's a very, but uh, I can say that one uh, practice, best practice cases of what have you, we have done in Korea with Samsung. So I can. Interesting. Yeah. Really interesting. So, Greg, I mean, obviously, a lot happening in the development of equipment. What, what has been happening uh, on, on uh, your platforms? Uh, to, to improve the quality of inspection and, and the throughput? 
Yeah, sure. If you, if you talk about the, um, go all the way back to the hardware, I mean, the, the image chain and the, uh, and the hardware that's uh, used to create the images, there's been a tremendous, a lot of, tremendous amount of innovation in uh, both the tube technology and the detector technology. And I'll go back to an example I used in the semiconductor side. So, for example, on a semiconductor defect, we may need 10 micron resolution. Now, we may not require that 10 micron resolution for a printed circuit board assembly, but instead of using a, a 12 millimeter field of view that we'd use in a semiconductor um, image, we can get the same uh, image quality at, at, at 10 micron resolution over a 25 mm field of view. So it's so it's really taking the technology that's developed for much more um, uh, much more constrained and much more um, uh, detailed inspection tasks, and then porting it back into the SMT side. On the, to, to get further to CK's point, I think there's as much data out there that we don't use that we do use. And, for, and I'll use the example of a verification um, station. So uh, an operator is typically making a decision at a verification station is, was it really a defect or is it a, is it a false call? And it's easy to press that false call um, button. Well, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of things you can do to kind of make sure that the operator's band of decision making is really um, narrowed down. So for example, if it's clearly a defect, if there's a missing component, if it's completely misaligned, right. you don't want to even put that decision into the hands of the operator to make that decision. But I think more importantly in terms of machine learning, um, there's data collected there. And each time an operator makes a decision that something that the machine called a defect is indeed a defect, there's data collected. We collect it in what we call a defect catalog. Now that information can sit idle or it can be fed back into the system and used for um, either selecting which measurements you're going to take on the next batch of product that runs through. Um, so I, I think, again, like it's, it's easy to kind of drift all the way to the end and say, uh, we're going to take the operator out of the verification process altogether. Certainly, that's, a, you know, that's an admirable goal and we should be driving in that direction. But for me, the, the real innovation in terms of product that's going to happen over the, next, over the next two to four years is really centered around the machine learning that's resident in the system itself. And right. again, smart algorithms, tuning the machine right. automatically based upon the data that's collected. So I think the combination of of a smart machine that is self-healing, if you will, or uses machine learning in an intelligent way, and making more tools available to the operator at the verification station to make it easy for them to make the right decision. I think really that's the bulk of the work, and too often the conversation drifts all the way to the end of this artificial intelligent environment where uh, the operator comes out of the process altogether and truly um, based on millions Millions of pieces of data set, the uh, decisions made automatically. Well, I mean, it, it's, yes. it's not in line really. If, if you've still got an operator involved in it, <laughs> try and take them out of it. But um, I would say, but um, Michael, you know, looking at the applications of uh, X-ray, there's, there's certainly been um, uh, a growth in semiconductor X-ray test. Um, do you think that's another area that, that's going to be, become mainstream for inline X-ray in the future? Yeah, there, there are two kind of uh, directions. One is <clears throat> to look for that elusive zero defect and be able to identify, for example, from a semiconductor, what are the patterns of instance of defects am I getting? Is it a certain part uh, of the wafer that's providing that? Or is it something to do with the packaging or bonding? Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of uh, emphasis on the discovery mm -hmm. of the causes of those things and making sure that they can be filtered out. Um, but then you come along to some of the more quite simple things like uh, anti-counterfeit. You know, you get a little black package with leads coming out and everybody thinks, yeah, that's my IC, that's great. No, it's just a bit of plastic actually, sorry. <laughs> um, and we see X-ray being used quite extensively now to confirm that components are really what they say they are. Right. Uh, it's a thing that nobody really wants to admit, but most companies, if not all companies, have an issue with counterfeit, whether they know it or admit it. Uh, the US military, as we know, they've said 15% of their entire supply chain is suspect counterfeit. Right. So, it's frightening, isn't it? X rays are a wonderful <laughs> way to expose those kind of things and, in the, the same process, confirm the quality. Right. 
So you're doing two things with one piece of equipment. So that's quite cost effective, actually, and it automates that process. Is that something that's on your horizon, CK, you know, the counterfeit market? Uh, are you doing much on that side? Yeah, it's, a, it's a, uh, basically uh, uh, the inspection is, uh, uh, as Lou said, the process control. And uh, uh, after process control, we need to verify the production itself is well done or not. Without uh, 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 inspection and last stage, we cannot verify anything. We can control the process, mm -hmm. but without final inspection, we cannot guarantee any perfection of the product. That's right. the important point. Right, okay. Um, okay, so we're running out of time a little bit, but um, uh, uh, what, what is your view on the, on the, the counterfeit side? Do you do much on that at all? Yeah, it's a significant part of our business today, and has been for um, has been for some period of time. So, um, yeah, it's definitely a market we see, and I think it's it's a fair point. Is if you can get a uh, what we call a two four. So a lot of the um, counterfeit we work um, today is at an end product stage or what we call final assembly and test. So um, again, you can verify um, the semiconductor device uh, via either inline x-ray or island of automation x-ray you can you can um, you can verify individual critical components like battery where a fair amount of our business lands today or a power hybrid device where there's a significant growth um, today so all the way ahead of the printed circuit card then uh, printed circuit board assembly is as well explained by CK and then post um, printed circuit board assembly is final assembly and test and um, here if a product is coming into, for example, a repair center, you want to make sure before you're the uh, manufacturer, you fulfill that warranty that it really is the product they claim and that the defect is right. real. Um, so that's a good example of where, um, where fraud detection is being used today. But also in that same environment, you can use the same setup, if you will, to verify things and find missing screws in a final assembly, mm -hmm. um, you know, loose screws, um, springs that are misaligned, things Things that would be uh, would negate all of the value add in the previous but is that, steps. Is that not a visual inspection? Uh, uh tool rather than using x-ray to do that? It's x-ray. A lot of times the uh, the device is fully packaged at that point mm. and um, anything other than x-ray inspection would be uh, would be impossible unless mm. you wanted to disassemble disassemble the product. Okay. I okay. mean in many cases we're doing this fraud detection with the, with the with the product still in the box. Mm. So yeah. uh, still in the manufacturer's box. Yeah. Right. Right. Fascinating discussion. I wish we had more time to go through uh, to go into it, but uh, unfortunately we've run out of time, gentlemen. So I want to thank the panel, Michael a uh, Michael Ford from Aegis uh, on the end, uh, CK Park from Tech Valley in Korea, and Greg Wood from Norton Matrix. Thank you, okay. gentlemen. Thank you. And thank, thank you for joining Thanks. us today. Thank you.